Okay, in this video, we are going to look into a frequency divider circuit. So this is my quick circuit series where we look at a simple but useful circuit. So we'll be looking at a frequency divider circuit, which you can see on my breadboard. So if we had a clock, say a 1 kilohertz clock, and we wanted an output of 200 hertz, we would divide it by 5. Or if you wanted an output of 250 hertz, we would divide it by 4. Or 500 hertz, we would divide it by 2. I'm using a CD4017 counter. It's a divide by 10 counter. But with this extra chip, it's my reset chip, it's a CD4001, we could actually make it divide anywhere between 1 to 9, depending where we put this jumper. Now when I design with logical circuits, with clock circuits, this is my clock that I use. It's a flashing LED. It's actually an LED with a little oscillator inside that will actually pulse this LED and I use that for my clock circuit so I don't have to uh, bother about a 555 timer or, or a frequency generator. So we'll feed that clock into the 4017 and we'll divide by anywhere between 1 to 9 depending where I put this jumper. Now you've probably seen a lot of circuits using the CD4017 and they're usually a lead sequencer or a lead chaser. It's very common. So we'll first have a look at that circuit. And this is the old familiar LED sequence circuit using the CD4017 decade counter which has 10 outputs. Now I only have 8 outputs out of the 10 outputs hooked up because I didn't have enough LEDs so you could add 2 more LEDs to this uh, sequence. Now I'm clocking the chip with a flashing LED which you can see at the top left hand corner. That's what's clocking the IC which is sequencing the LEDs. So you could substitute this clock circuit for a 555 timer so you could adjust the sequence rate to your liking. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the LED sequencer using the CD4017 decade counter IC. Now on my breadboard I only had eight, 8 LEDs, but on the circuit diagram here I included the 10, so you could build it with 10. And this is my clock circuitry. It's a flashing LED being buffered by a MOSFET transistor. And that's being clocked into pin 14. That's the clock input of the chip, which will clock the sequencer. But again, you could actually put a 555 timer in its place if you want, uh, so you could actually adjust the sequence speed. Okay, I have my frequency divider circuit powered up. And you can see my input clock LED flashing. That's fed into the input of the 4017 uh, divide by 10 counter. And I have my jumper set up for a divide by 5. So for every 5 clock pulses, input to the 4017 will get one clock pulse out, which you can see on this LED. So if you count the clocks in, for every five clocks input, we'll have one clock output. So that's a divide by five. Now by changing the jumper, I could change it to different settings. So I'll go over to another setting. We'll have a look at the input clock. And that's a divide by two. So for every two clock inputs, I'm getting one clock output, so that would be my divide by two. So next we'll have a look at the schematic of the circuit that I have in my breadboard. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my programmable frequency divider, which uses two ICs. Now the first one is the CD4017, that's my divide by 10 counter. And the second IC is the CD4001, which are two input NOR gates. Now these two NOR gates are cross-coupled, so they're configured as an SR flip-flop. And the output of this flip-flop is the output of our frequency divider. Now we're powering the whole circuit with 9 volts. That's our VCC. And my clock generator is a flashing LED, which is being buffered by a MOSFET transistor, a VN10KM. So our output of our, our clock generator is fed into pin 14 of the 4017 divided by 10 counter. Now when, on each clock pulse, we'll have a logical one that's going to move along in sequence along the Q0 to Q9 outputs every time we get a clock pulse, just like we saw on an LED chaser. So after five clock pulses into the 4017, we're going to have a high on pin 5, or the Q5. And if my jumper is connected to Q5, it's going to set my flip-flop, which would send a high pulse into the reset, which would force the Q0 to go low, and that will reset my flip-flop, and my output will go low. So it's a closed-loop system, so on each clock pulse, we're going to have the logical one moving along in sequence with the clock input. And wherever we have our jumper, if I have my jumper on, on clock output 8, Q8, we'll have a divide by 8 on the output. 
So whatever frequency we have on our input will be divided by whatever we pick on our jumpers and that will be, that'll be seen on our output. Okay, I disconnected my flashing LED clock circuit. So now I have a 1 kilohertz square wave input to my circuit with my jumper set for divide by 2. So now we can have a look at the output of my circuit with my scope. So there's the output and you can see my bottom trace is the 1 kilohertz square wave signal and the top trace is the output of my frequency divider circuit. And you can see it's indicating 500 hertz on the frequency counter so it's dividing by 2. Now the output is not 50% duty cycle because I'm using this output to feed edge triggered circuits. Now if you want a 50% duty cycle output you could feed this output into a D flip-flop that's configured in toggle mode with half the output frequency. Now I'll change the configuration to divide by 4. Now you can see in the scope the output frequency is 250 hertz and I'll change my configuration to divide by 5 and now the output of my frequency divider circuit is 200 hertz. Okay, so that was my frequency divider circuit. It's pretty easy to build. All you need is two ICs. And you could also use a flashing LED as your clock input. Because if you don't have a scope, it comes in handy. You could actually see the input waveform versus the output waveform. It gives you a visual indication. And these flashing LEDs, they can be powered from 3 to 12 volts. So pretty versatile. You can use them in a lot of projects. Now, if you don't have a scope, you could also use a logic probe for troubleshooting. It, it, it indicates high low values. So that's another, another tool that you could use uh, for troubleshooting logic IC circuits. So keep this in mind, your frequency divider circuit, and you could use it in a lot of building blocks in other projects.